we're going to talk about matrix multiplication. This little fact um, is a little bit off topic, but I wanted to include it in this, in this video. So this is a little side note that I want to include in this video of multiplication, matrix multiplication, of course. So um, matrix multiplication is not commutative which could raise the question of whether there are left inverses and right inverses which may not be the same. But in fact, they are the same. If there is a left inverse and a right inverse, then they have to be the same. Um, so that's what we're gonna prove. So let's write down the, the fact, uh, fact, um, if A, B, is the identity, and that means that A is a left inverse of B, and um, BC is the identity as well. We're gonna assume that the, all of the matrices involved are square matrices, of course, and they are um, um, square matrices of the same size, of course. Yeah, all of them are of the same size. So if this, if this is a three by three, so is B, and so is I, and so is C, and, and the same thing with this I. So all of them are of the same size. They don't have to be three by three, they could be two by two or four by four or 100 by 100, but um, they have to be of the same size. Um, so we're gonna assume that those two facts, if this is true, then, it is true that A has to be equal to C. It cannot be that we have a left identity and a right identity of B. That is called a right identity because when we multiply on the right, we get the identity. I'm sorry, I meant to say C is a right inverse of B because when we multiply together, we get the identity. And A is a left inverse of B because when we multiply on the left of B, we get the identity. Are they the same? And the answer is yes. So we're gonna prove that, proof. Um, it's actually quite short. I should be able to fit it on the, on, on the rest of the page. Um, so just write down A, and A has to be equal to um, A times the identity, A times the identity, because that is the definition of identity. Uh, and we mean identity with respect to multiplication, which means that when we multiply by uh, matrix, we end up with the, that matrix again. That's what this statement says. When we multiply the identity with A, we end up with A. So that is by definition, um, definition of identity. All right. Now, I, as stated up here, is equal to BC. So this is equal to A times the quantity BC. And we're just substituting the given statement. Yeah, so we're using substitution. This I is equal to BC. That's what they are telling us. The, the premises of, the, of this fact, one of the premises of the fact is, is that um, I equals BC. So we're just, there's I, so we're just plain substituting. Uh, substituting. All right, um, but then we can reassociate this as A, B, C. Multiplication is associative. Um, so this is um, associative property of multiplication. Um, by the way, up here, perhaps we can elaborate a little more. We can say substitution, comma, and also given. That's part of the premise. Um, so this is a little bit like a geometry proof. You know, you, you do things, and then you state why you did them. Um, and then A, B is equal to I. Again, we can use substitution. So again, substitution and given. It's a given fact that we may assume. And we, 
if we use those two, we want to arrive to this answer, to, to this conclusion rather. Uh, but the identity times C, the definition of identity is that it doesn't matter whether you multiply it on the left or on the right, you still end up with the same, the same matrix. So this is C by uh, definition of identity. All right, so this chain of equations shows that A is equal to that, which in the, which then is, is equal to that, which in turn is equal to that, which in turn is equal to that, which in turn is equal to C. And so by the um, transfer, it's not transfer, uh, transitive rather, the transitive property of equality. Um, so I'm gonna make a space here on the left and we're gonna continue here. So by transitive property of equality, you know, so which states that if two things are equal and then the second of those two equal things is equal to a third thing, that means that the first and the third are equal but then we can extend that uh, because now those two are equal, but then this is equal to that. So that means that the original one is equal to, to the fourth one. And then now that we have that, the fourth one is equal to the fifth one. So by again, transitive property, those two are equal. So then, um, but then that is equal to this. So again, by transferring the, the transitive rather, the transitive property of equality, that is equal to C. So we are, we're applying the transitive property, let's see, once, twice, three, four times. Um, so by transitive property of equality, I'm gonna put in parentheses, oh, I forgot how many. So that is one, two, three, four times. Yep, four times. Although most people don't state, don't clarify that, but I just wanted to clarify it. Um, so by this property, A equals C, which is what we wanted to prove, which is what we wanted to prove. So, yeah. So this is the first column. This is not very nicely written because we go from left to right typically, but I run out of space. I should have probably gone into the next page, but I wanted to keep it in the same page. So from here, once we finish here, we continue there with our argument. And that proves that if we have a right inverse, rather a left inverse uh, of a matrix B and a right inverse of a matrix B, then uh, the two inverses have to be the same, one in the same they cannot be different. So that is an interesting fact, an important fact of matrices. And by the way, this is an introduction on, on how to prove things, um, yeah, a, of this kind of, of facts. So let's go to multiplication of matrices. And, and there is a, a different ways of looking at multiplication of matrices. Um, so, so ways to see multiplication of matrices. Um, yep, yep. So one way is, um, well, let's call it the original way. So, um, um, original. Well, the reason why I'm calling it original is because it is original to me. I don't, that's, that's the, the way I have always done it from, from the beginning. Uh, so that's why I'm calling it original. Th this is not a name that is uh, universal. I'm just giving this name myself right now. Um, and and let's, let's think about, uh, let's have an example of this way of, of multiplying matrices. So 
let's put some numbers, three, one, um, two, seven, and let's do two square matrices, um, five, negative two. Um, we don't wanna use big numbers, um, but I don't wanna use too many of the same uh, because then it, it gets confusing a little bit. Okay, let's just keep it like that. Oh, that's interesting. I'm using square brackets as opposed to uh, round parentheses. It doesn't matter which one we use. So we can fill this in by looking at each one of the entries one by one. So for instance, if I want the, the, the bottom left entry, Okay, so I, I look at the bottom row and left column of the first and second matrix. By the way, this is gonna be labeled as the first and that's the second matrix of the multiplication. And we do the dot product of those two. And that's it. So two times five is 10, seven times four is 28. So we end up with 38 and that's it. And then, we do the same thing. So if you want the bottom right one, you go to the bottom row, the right column, multiply those two and that gives you this, this entry. If you want the, the top left, you go to the top row, left column, multiply those two and voila. Um, if there were three rows, that means that we would have three rows in the answer. And if we wanted the middle row, the middle, uh, a, an element in the middle row and say the second column, you go to the middle row in the first matrix, second column, and that's it. So, so whatever row you are in, in, the, in your answer, you go to the corresponding row on the first matrix, whatever column we are looking on the, on the answer, we go to the corresponding column and that's it. And that's how, how we obtain each one of the elements. So that's what I would call the original. And this is one way to multiply matrices just by rows and columns. And how do you know which one? Well, every element on the answer will be in a particular row. So pick that row and then, um, on the first matrix and then pick the corresponding column on the second matrix. I just wanna check one, yes. I wanna make sure I was taping. Yesterday I taped a whole thing without taping it. What I meant by that is I forgot to press the tape button. And uh, so I was talking to myself for, for a while. That wasn't, uh, it was, I mean, now it's funny, but it wasn't funny yesterday when I did it. Uh, so that is, that is one, that is the way I learned to multiply matrices back in, in the, um, when I learned to do that. I think it was in the early 80s, 1980s. All right, so let's talk about columns. So that's another way to, to think of this. By the way, doing this is just one shot. Uh, you don't have to do more. In fact, let's finish this up. So. So the upper left uh, element is found by using the, the upper row and the left column. So that's 15 and four, 19. Um, the upper right element would be formed by looking at a top row and right column. So negative six plus six, oh, negative six plus six, that is a zero. And then the bottom right, bottom row, right column. So negative four plus 42, that's 38. Oh, that's a coincidence. Uh, I think it is a coincidence. Um, so 10 and 28 is 38. Negative four plus 42 is 38. Wow. Anyway, um, so by columns means Take the first matrix, three, one, two, seven, uh, multiply by the first column, five, four, 
add again the matrix three, one, two, seven. By the second a column. Yep, so that's by columns. Um, yeah, so instead of putting a matrix, two matrices like that, you can break up this matrix into columns and obtain the same result. Well, let's make sure. So, um, so we have a three, two by two, two by one. I don't think that's gonna work as good. Um, hang on a moment, please. Okay, I just realized when, when I was breaking this up into columns, we have to keep this separate as columns within one big matrix. So we're not gonna add those two. What we're gonna do is keep them as a column and a column of a bigger matrix. So let's, let's think of this. Again, we're multiplying those two matrices, but we're thinking of the multiplication differently as originally, as originally we did it. So originally it's think of rows, isolated rows, isolated columns, multiply them together, and then we get the entries. Here, we're looking at just the columns of this matrix, and we're gonna multiply the left matrix with the columns. That is gonna produce columns, which will correspond to those columns. So we are blocking, instead of thinking of elements in isolation, we are blocking the columns. We're thinking of columns on the right of this. All right, so um, let's just make sure this is correct. And there is no, nothing here but a space, no, no plus or anything, because we're thinking of a matrix a column and a column. When we multiply this, we end up with a column. But let's do it. So that is 15 uh, plus four, 19. Uh, 10 plus 28 is 38. Okay, so this multiplication gave us this column by itself. This multiplication is gonna give us the second column, I think. It's negative six plus six, zero negative four plus 42, 38. And there we go. So it does help to think of multiplications in different ways. One way is by looking at one element at a time, we can zoom in into one element and figure out the, the answer, the entry for that element or we can think of it as columns. So, so the left matrix times this column gives us this column. The left side matrix or the left matrix times this column gives us this column. Or we can think in terms of rows. But the rows cannot be the ones on the left because of the way we, we multiply we have to think in terms of, of these guys. Um, no, 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 the other way around. These are the columns. We're gonna think of the rows in this sense. So multiply, for instance, three, one. Um, boy, that's gonna be, let me, let me put it on a different page. Yep. So let's talk about rows. Uh, three, one, so the row, three, one, will be multiplied with a matrix five, negative two, four, six. That's gonna give us a row vector. And then the second row, two, seven, can be multiplied with a matrix five, negative two, four, six. And that's gonna be another row. So think of this as a row, the top row, and this is the bottom row. 
and that will create the answer, the product. Whoa. Okay, so let's go back to this. We can think of the left matrix times the columns of the right, the matrix on the right, or we can think of the rows of the left matrix multiplied by the matrix on the right. That's a third way of thinking of the multiplication of matrices. Well, let's double check. So 15 plus four, 19. So 19, uh, multiply this, three, one by four, two, six, and that's gonna give us six, uh, ra rather negative six plus six, zero. Okay, so this multiplication gives us this row. And let's do the same thing here. So now we move on to a second multiplication, 10 and 28 is 38, N negative four plus 42, 38. Okay, so we end up with this, the same matrix, but we're thinking of it as in rows. So those rows, okay, you can multi multiply each one of the rows by this matrix, and that's gonna give you each one of the rows. Or you can multiply this matrix by each one of the columns, and that's gonna be the corresponding columns. We want to have, we have to develop, we want to develop a good intuition about how matrices multiply with one another. And breaking them down into parts like this helps us understand that a little better. And then we have columns and rows. Yeah. Um, well, we wanna keep this page handy. Um, columns and rows. And then there's gonna be more than that. So in columns and rows, let's see. What we do is multiply the first column, three, two, by the first row of the second matrix, five, negative two. And then we're gonna add the second row, rather the second column, um, one, seven, by the second row, four, six. Which is anti-intuitive because when we multiply matrices, we go row, column, row, column, row, row, column. And here, this is very, very anti-intuitive because we're going column and then row, but it works. Um, so now mind that when we multiply those two matrices, this is a two by one, and this is a one by two. So the answer is gonna be a two by two. This is a super, super, super short uh, multiplication. You know, because the rows are very short, just, just three, and the columns are super short too. So three times five, 15. Three times negative two, uh, negative six. That finishes the first row. So these are super little matrices. Two times five, 10. Two times negative two, negative four. Okay, so that multiplication is finished. Now, one times four, I just wanna make sure that's a four, yes. One times four, four. One times six, six. Seven times four, 28. Seven times six, 42. Okay, so now when we put them together, we get 15 plus four, 19, negative six, plus six, zero, 10 plus 28, 38, negative four plus 42, 38 again. Wow, so we end up with the same answer, but now we're, th we're thinking columned and rows, column and rows. Um, I, I, to be honest, I didn't, see this before, I read this in a book by 
Gilbert Strong. I want to give him credit uh, for, for, to be perfectly honest, um, this is the, the first, the original, what I call the original is uh, the way I always saw multiplication. I didn't quite see multiplication the other ways um, until I read a book by uh, Gilbert Strong. So I just want to give him credit because that is not uh, um, something that, that I that I thought of. Um, but it is it is very very neat to see this, and and especially this is not easy to to think about uh, because we're talking about columns for the left and rows on the right, which is again anti-intuitive because the original. Multiplication is rows and columns. So I, I, I think that is very, very interesting. Um, one other thing, and by the way, all of this will work with three by three matrices. Actually, all of them will work for, for any kind of multiplication, including this column row multiplication. Uh, if you have a two by three, and then a three by something else uh, that this concept of column row multiplication to multiply matrices will still work. So that is very, very neat. Please practice it. I don't, I, it's neat to see some examples, but it, we really learn it better if we do some more examples ourselves. And what I would suggest to do is to take a few matrices, especially three by three, use small numbers, some negative, some zeros, to keep things as simple as possible, do a regular multiplication, and practice how to do the same kind of multiplication with columns, with rows, and with column rows. Okay. Um, and then we have multiplication by blocks. Um, so if you have a big matrix and we can split it up into, into blocks, um, yeah, let's start with an, a simple one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And let's say we want to multiply with, um, well, it has to be three by something. So I'm going to try to put some random numbers such as zero, seven, uh, five, negative one, um, two, positive one, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, we can probably split this into for instance, this four blocks, two by two, and split this into um, we split the other matrix like so. And instead of just looking at the elements individually, we can think of the the sub matrices. So, so we're splitting this three by three matrix into a two by two. Let's write this down, um, down here. Okay, so, so we have a matrix that is uh, two by two and a matrix that is two by one. So I'm looking at this, two by two, two by one, one by two, one by two, one by one, And then this one is two by two and one by two. So instead of looking at individual elements, if, if the, the sizes are split correctly, and all you have to do is make sure that the multiplications will work out, then you can just multiply the sub matrices themselves and the answer will be correct. Uh, so for instance here, 
um, this, and you multiply this, the blocks as if they were elements. So this block times this block is gonna give us a two by two block, but then we're gonna add, so we're gonna have a two by two block, and then we're gonna add the multiplication of this row, um, rather this column with this row, and that's gonna give us a two by two, so plus two by two, and that we're gonna end up with a two by two um, answer here, which makes sense. That's what we're supposed to end up with. You know, this is a three by three, multiplied with a three by two, we're gonna end up with a three by two answer. But instead of doing it element by element, we can do it block by block. Now, when you have a matrix, multi matrix multiplication this small, it doesn't really pay to do blocks. Uh, blocks are usually um, used when we have huge, huge matrices, I don't know, 50 by 50 or uh, 100 by 100. Uh, yeah, that's when we, we want to use blocks. For matrices that are up to five by five, um, well, occasionally I suppose we could use them, but generally speaking, for sure, if you have a three by three matrix or something smaller than three, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily use blocks unless I was trying to make a point or, or maybe take a shortcut, but in general, um, I'll just do a three by three. That's not a, uh, a big computation. Oh, let's finish this up. So this is one by two, two by two, if we multiply normally, and that would make this a, let's see, what is it? A one by two, two by two, so one by two, and then one by one times one by two, plus a one by two, and this is, one element and one element because we're gonna end up adding them together. Okay, so according to that, this, okay, is the matrix, um, yeah, one, two, four, five, multiplied with zero, seven, five, negative one, Okay, plus three, six, two, one. Okay, so the row, column, but of blocks, of matrices. And then to get the second entry, so pretend you got a four by two, essentially this is what we've done. We have reduced a three by three matrix into a two by two, and a three by two matrix into a two by one. So we think of this as, a, as one block. Anyway, a seven, eight, seven, eight, um, multiplied with this matrix, zero, seven, five, negative one, plus, nine, which is a one by one matrix multiplied with two one. There, boy. Okay, so let's, let's do that. Uh, so zero plus 10, um, seven, minus two, zero plus 25, um, 28 minus five. And then we're gonna add, this is the, the super short multiplication, six, three, 12, six, and then we, we're gonna end up here with zero plus 40, Forty-nine minus eight, whoops, 41,
Oh, and then boy, 18 and nine. <laughs> I'm laughing because, again, doing this multiplication with blocks is actually making it more complicated than if we didn't have blocks at all. So you may be thinking, yeah, I see that. Why, why then? Why would we do that to ourselves? Um, because really, this is more for, for, uh, for a big job, not for a small job. It's like, it's, it is like bringing a backhoe, an excavator, uh, uh, a big excavator to just make a little, you know, a, a one foot deep little hole, uh, you know, when a shovel will, will, will do. So why, why bring a big, big machine to make a little itty bitty hole? Uh, well, that, yeah, nobody would do that. They just get a shovel and, you know, push the shovel into the dirt and scoop it up a little bit and then you get your little hole. But if you need a big job, you know, if you're gonna make a, a, a six foot deep um, hole, then yeah, you, you, you need a machine. Well, you don't need it, but it would be nice to have a machine or, well, the same thing is happening here. Uh, I wouldn't use blocks for this multiplication because this is a small job um, that's almost making it more difficult than it has to be. But I'm just trying to make the point that um, blocks, multiplication with blocks do work. So let's see, uh, six, oh no, we're just gonna add, so 16. So we got the block 16 and then five and three, eight, and then 25 and 12 is 37 and 23 and six is 29. And then we, we have 40 and 18 is 58 and 41 and nine is 50, boy. So, so the final answer should be, well, let's double check. So now I'm not gonna use blocks, I'm just gonna multiply straight. So um, if we want the upper left element, we use the upper row and left column. So no thing, 10 and six, 16. Uh, the upper right one element would be first, the upper row and right column. So seven, five, and three, eight. Um, middle element on the left uses the middle row and left column. So nothing, 25, nothing, 25, and 12, 37. Seven times, 20, times four is 28, minus five is 23, plus six is 29. Okay, so the bottom row and the first column gives us the, the, the bottom row on the first matrix and the first column on the second matrix gives us the element on the bottom row and the first column. So zero, 40, 58, and then 49 minus eight is 41 plus nine is 50. And sure enough, that matches this guy down here. You know, this is in blocks, so we still have it in blocks. But uh, again, this is a small job. I wouldn't use blocks for a small job like this. It's just, unless I was trying to make a point of, of some sort. Uh, yeah, it's like, like making, a, trying to, to make a, a little hole, you know, just to, I don't know, you're gonna bury something small, a bone or something. You know, um, in 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 the in the ground, and there's no point in, in using big heavy machinery. You know, just a shovel will do. Or so, so there. That's how we um, how we have multiplication of matrices. And with this, we will stop this video.